Most of you guys already know the basics to water injection. You take water, put it into your engine somehow, and you get horsepower. What I figured is instead of starting kind of at the halfway point, real quick, cover the basics of engines because all of this sort of information builds off itself. So I'll try and make it humorous. I can't promise that, but start from the basics real quick and then we'll cover the details of water injection. To start off, you take fuel, you take air, put those two bad boys together, and if you're a pyromaniac, you probably have a Zippo lighter on you right now. Lighter, spark, boom. You get energy. You don't get an explosion. Even though it feels like it's exploding, it's exploding. It's actually uh, a, a carefully controlled flame. It really is. If you were to put it in really slow motion, it's not what people will call an explosion. So that's the first small thing is never think of that as an explosion. I made that mistake and I sounded like a moron. So life is great. You got those three things. Fortunately, you take a lot less fuel than air. There's 14.7, say 14 and a half, whatever, 14.7 pieces of air to every piece of fuel because thank God it's not the other way around because fuel is expensive as hell. Take 14 of these, they hang out with a one. <laughs> Sounds like a fuel gangbang. <laughs> you take 14 of those, one piece of fuel, get the party started, and you can create the most efficient amount of energy with all parties involved. So, people were like, okay, great. But people then, 100 years ago, can't tell if it was a guy or a girl, I'm not misogynistic, but somebody up to 100 years ago decided, why not compress those and then light it? And you know, you, you think about it, compressing them takes energy, which is very true. But the actual act of compressing all those gets them all closer together. They're still the same amount. But when you light that, you have a more efficient, uh, I'm not gonna say explosion, more efficient um, you know, combustion, and consequently, more power. So it's actually worthwhile putting that energy in to get it more out. What's interesting though, you ever seen an air compressor or uh, physics teachers normally do this if they're cool, is that when you compress air, like the back of your uh, refrigerator, that's not air, but if you compress things, what happens is things heat up. Anytime there's a compressor or a compression involved, you create heat. It's thermodynamics or whatever, I, I don't know, but I, I'm smart enough to know that it is actually thermodynamics. So, what what's the problem there? Well. The hotter you get, uh, this might, some of you might already know this, but the hotter you get, you can actually light fuel on fire without a flame or without a spark. It's called auto ignition or um, magic to some of us. But it's actually to the point, paper will do this too. I think at 450, 550 degrees, somewhere in there where things will actually catch on fire because they're so hot. That is not good. If something catches on fire or combust before the moment, in, in human terms, that's called a premature ejaculator. That ruins the party. You do not want to, <laughs> to go before you, the party happens. So what happens is you always want the spark plug to dictate when the explosion, damn it, I keep saying explosion, when the combustion occurs. So fuels, this is the next thing. You got these high compression, that's called compression, high compression engines. You know, nine plus, 10 times. That means that you're compressing the air 10 times. Very important, liquids, fuel and air, <laughs> fuel and water do not compress. Air does, very important fact. Anyway, the more compression you get, the more heat you get, the more likely that you're allowed to, or going to catch those things on fire without a spark to occur. So you go to the gas station and you're like, you know what? I'm going to put premium fuel into my engine. My car deserves it. She's been running great. I'm going to get more horsepower. You're wrong. You're actually wrong. Putting better gas and consequently more expensive gas into your engine does not create more horsepower. There is a completely wrong, tell your friends this, it is a completely wrong notion. When you put better gas into your engine, you're actually putting less excitable, less efficient gas, gas that takes more pushing, more prodding to catch on fire. And that's the whole point of premium gas is not uh, that it's more efficient or better, 
It's just that it will take more heat before it auto ignites. And that's a very important fact is that if you do the reverse and put regular gas, 87 octane into a high performance engine, most of them are smart enough where they'll detect that and chill the engine out. You just won't make as much horsepower. But on my RX-7, if I was to do that, boom, I would blow that engine because that gas is so easy to piss off, so easy to excite that it will actually blow up, ah, combust too soon. So what happens is if you combust too soon, that's called detonation. Detonation, it's called detonation. And so what happens is your engine's in a, you know, moving, it's doing things. And a piston engine's going in a, you know, this whole circle. A rotary engine's also going in a circle. Magic shape involved in all this. If you go too soon, if it, the engine pops too soon, it actually will go backwards. And that lasts all of like a fraction of a second. The whole engine gets all pissy and you've detonated your engine. In a rotary engine, you'll probably break your apex seals, crap will happen, babies will start crying, and piston engine owners will laugh at you. So is that it? Is that it? You just detonate your engine and you're done? No. There's a warning. There's a, a guardian angel in this whole situation, and that's called knock. Or, it, like my computer side of me thinks is hilarious, pinging. And the reason it's called knock or ping is that in a piston engine, you can hear it. It's like this ping. And in a rotary engine, it still happens, but you have to they got a little microphone on the, the engine. What is that? Well, knocking is actually when you're getting so close to detonating, so close to pissing off the engine, that weird stuff starts happening. You got an engine. You got air and fuel in here. You compress it. You got your spark plug right here. Spark plug ignites. What happens? Have you ever dumped tons of gas on a grill or on a bonfire drunkenly and lit that? You and your friends will feel that heat wave. You know, you feel that like shock wave of some sort. And you check, my eyebrows are still there, your arm hair's gone, but everybody's laughing and having a fun time. What happens is that's actually creating pressure. When you ignite something, that combustion will actually create pressure. So, You've got this, this chamber, you started a compression here, and if say we were super, super slow motion, it comes from here, and it's doing this cool heat wave, you know, spark front, heat front, flame front, there's a term for it, but you get the idea, you know, this like slow motion, Bruce Willis, die hard thing, it's coming down this way. It's creating pressure though. If the engine's really close to being pissed off anyway, that'll put so much pressure down here that it will actually catch on fire by itself because it pushed it over that pressure heat level. So you'll actually have a second flame in super slow motion. You have a second flame start here and the two will meet. And that's where the ping sounds. You know, you get sounds because of this weird stuff. Boom, you get this like slapping like flame front crap. That in itself is not very damaging to the car. You can do it a lot. You do it all the time, you're gonna blow the engine. But it itself is kind of like a, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's chill out. We're right on the edge of something really bad happening because things are so hot that things are actually catching on fire at that moment and without a spark, without a spark over there. What can cause that? Bad gas, <laughs> indigestion. No, bad gas, carbon buildup, other, uh, just running the engine too hard. If you push it so hard, you will actually, boom. So water ejection. There are two major things that water does. If, and let's not, let's forget about how it gets in there. But you got this compression chamber, you've got compression. Let's not even talk about turbochargers because that just adds more compression, more, more pressure. But that's still just air. So let's pretend we take a little spray bottle of water, pause the whole scenario, open the engine up, spray some real fine water to the point, it's almost like breathing on it. You know, you go on the outside if you're from Michigan or even, you know, Minnesota, eh? <laughs> and you breathe outside, you see, you, you have tons of moisture coming out of your breath. That is the same kind of concept here. It's not water droplets, it's moisture. Really fine water droplets. But what happens? You, you pause the scenario, you put everything back together, and you start playing again. All that water does is it can absorb heat is that it's basically saying, hey, I'll take some of that heat from you guys. Let's chill this situation out. Kind of like a bouncer at a club. Let's everybody be cool. Be cool. And the, the thing still happens. It doesn't stop 
the flame from happening, it doesn't stop anything from happening. It just is like kind of collecting heat from everything. And sure enough, the water holds it, the heat, water turns into steam, goes out the back of the engine, out the exhaust, everybody's happy. That's one thing, which is its guardian angel ability. The second thing that water injection does is actually cleans the inside of the combustion chamber. And you're probably thinking, well, well so, well, why is that important? Well, take your finger, put it inside of the exhaust pipe at the very end of your car. That. What happens is you've got carbon buildup. And on race cars, it's worse because you don't have you know, a catalytic converter. You don't have filters, basically. You're just going all out. Excuse me. So what happens is that carbon comes from a lot of things. Bad gas. Um, you've got problems. You've got running too much fuel, not enough fuel. You've got just a lot of scenarios that create carbon inside of the engine in the combustion chamber. That stuff builds up. So when you've got a buildup of that, okay, you, you know, it's, it's kind of creating like, and you'll, you'll see it if you pull apart an engine, you'll see like carbon stuff you can scrape off when it's on top of the engine or the top of the metal. What happens though, that stuff holds heat. And so you're thinking, okay, well, so what Rob, you know, there's a lot of heat in the engine anyway. No, what happens is, say you create, you know, a spark boom, you've got exhaust going out, you've got this hot carbon on the inside of the engine bay. What happens? or engine. What happens when you put cold new fuel into that spot? That can actually catch the fuel on fire, pre-detonating the engine again, without you even doing anything else. So water injection has two benefits. Cleaning the engine cylinder combustion chamber out you know, by steam cleaning, and absorbing heat, taking, you know, being the bouncer inside the engine. Why pre-turbo? Why am I putting and spitting water into the front of a turbocharger? Well, again, it comes down to heat. It's always heat. You know, if you ever are asking about water injection, just say heat and you're 99.9% .9 right. What happens is a turbocharger is only efficient within its efficiency range. And that's kind of a political statement because anything's only efficient in its efficiency range. But really, that if you push it too hard, it actually creates more heat, again, compressing air, than it does boost. It, you know, it's a percentage. So what happens is, water goes into the front of the turbocharger as a moisture. If it goes in as water droplets or just raw water, you will actually eat away the blades. But if it's moisture, just like if you're down in Florida, what happens is it goes in there and absorbs heat from the turbocharger blade. And it really does increase the efficiency of a turbocharger. So you actually can run that same turbocharger one, two PSI higher. So you, again, you can step up the performance now that you've got the safety net, step up the performance and get more efficiency out of the turbo. So you say to me, okay, Rob, all of that mumbo jumbo is cool and all, but let's actually look at the real system. So here's my kit from my friend Brent at wannaspeed.com. And if you're saying, Rob, you sell out, you piece of shit, no, first of all, I paid the same price that everybody else will pay, and you know why? Because this kit works amazing. It's an absolutely impressive system. So, I'll put a link to his site. Uh, all car parts are made by people, so let's get over that fact right away. Um, so, there's a water tank, a baby water tank. You put pressure in, just like your super soaker. You actually, you know, you got water in here, distilled water, H2O, you actually pressurize it. So it sends water out the bottom. You know, the pressure is just to get water out of it. It gets filtered because let's be honest, we don't want crap going into the front of your turbo blades at 100,000 RPM, which they, yes, they really actually do go at 100,000 RPM. This little guy, see it's got electronics. So that's where it gets kind of wild. This little guy takes the water and is like, remember your old like uh, safeties at elementary school, you know, the stop and go people with the signs that stop cars. This little thing's a little solenoid that stops you from going. So there's water, pressurized water just sitting right there waiting to go. What it does is it waits until you get a go signal. Oh, my hands are still full of carbon. It waits till you get a go signal from 
the boost sensor. And you, you know, you can configure it all you want. That's custom part. But once once it reaches a certain PSI, in my case 10, it lets the water out. So the water goes into this side of this nozzle right here. And on this side, you've actually got blue hose. Let me refocus it. So you got blue hose going into this side, which is air. Water plus air. And you actually have a uh, combination of two, kind of like an old perfume bottle. And you actually get this beautiful mist without tons of pressure. So let's set that right there. What does it look like? Right there. Let's see if we can get even closer. That's all there is to it. There's all these little nozzles. It's very, you can see how close, how detailed it is. That's how little, how small it is. You get a nice fine mist out of the front of that. Oops. That goes into the front of this guy right here. So you're saying, well, okay, that's getting really confusing, Rob. I want to see a real example. Let's see a real example set up here. This is my first RX-7. This is fully operational. This is working fully beautifully well. So fully beautiful well, that's awesome. So what happens is, simply put, there's the, the nozzles right hidden underneath that thing right there. Kind of see it, let's see if we focus. So same kind of concepts there. The nozzle is sitting in the front of the water, like I, that's a custom made um, air filter. The nozzle's going into the front of the turbo. That's the turbo right there. So I've got air circulating. That is considered a boost leak, but that's, air, that's so small, it just recirculates. So the air pushes the water from over here. There's that filter, there you go right there. Pressurize the water tank, it's filtered. It goes to that solenoid, the little safety stop gate right there. Once that turns on, once it gets the go signal, it lets air and water mix and go into the front of the turbo. That's the whole setup right there.